Welcome to week 12 of fasting in Fayetteville. And we are going to spend our time today to wrap up to see and share with each other in community what God has said to us during this time, what action steps God's called us to from our time together, where we're going to go next and lessons learned. So one of our participants here Stephen, I asked him to give a start, so we're ready when you are. And if you, I'll close it for you. Oh, you got it? Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will pick up. Hello, everybody. Stephen Whitty here. And uh, started getting into this class uh, about four weeks into it, a little bit late on it, and, uh, but it's been Absolutely incredible for uh, for me, not just health, but particularly spiritual. Everything has really started to come into alignment uh, for me, and uh, it, it would not. I can't, I couldn't see any other way of it uh, without everything that I've been learning and uh, practicing for this course. Um, so again, started my uh, second attempt at a seven-day fast, started yesterday. And so going into day two, my first one, building of the ability to do it uh, longer term. So uh, trying to hit the uh, seven-day goal this time. It's like the video of the day, schedules down, prayers built in, uh, the intention for the whole, uh, the spiritual intention for the journey and feel like it would be great success. And, uh, also, uh, I am a, a PA as well and uh, took out insurance to uh, help anybody uh, joining with them to go through any uh, their fasting if uh, they wanted anybody there with them to do it uh, with them. Good luck to you all, and thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen. Were you able to hear that, Sandra? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, yes. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, Carl, while you're here, will you go up to the mic? There's something you'd like to share about the experience and material we covered this 12 weeks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you can say no. It's a yeah, he's, he said he's going to pass. Okay. Anybody else want to share about their experience with us these 12 weeks, what God has showed them, what we've learned from the resources and what God is calling you to next? It's your opportunity to share. Barbara, you have anything? I'd appreciate you talking about your border wall. Would you share that with the community? Um, let me, yes. Am I on? Yeah, I guess. Oh, I'd love to. Yes. Uh, we went, um, there were six of us. We took two cars and we traveled from, uh, just outside of Wilmington, uh, I guess almost to the South Carolina border actually. And we stopped at, um, uh, several major points along the way and prayed together. Um, and then all along the um, the coast, because we're looking for towards the praying on the borders of North Carolina and the strategic places. So we hit several, a couple of military bases, um, some, um, I think there's a, a nuclear plant somewhere that we stopped at, um, some kind of energy energy plant big energy plant I didn't I didn't make the list up so I only went with them and prayed and you know and joined them as he we went so I don't you know all the strategic places I don't remember them all right now I have a list mm -hmm. but we um and then we went all the way up to um and we we stopped at um oh shoot what's the place um Roanoke Rapids Mm -hmm. I guess there's some some uh, a lot of stuff going on there in that area. Um, we went all the way up to um, 
way up north to Virginia. And we drove, as we drove, we're praying each in our cars. And then when we get together, we're praying and um, asking God to bless the churches and to, you know, all the churches that we went by and stuff and all the, and the coastline um, and the waters, there's different spirits for different areas, um, different demonic, demonic activity that we prayed against. Uh, we came all the way down 95 on the last day and we prayed all along that corridor to um, to stop the trafficking, we prayed against the spirit of, of of Molech and and all the things that are for um, taking, you know, because the Molech is um, the God that that uh, way back ancient times or in Israel times, even that they sacrifice babies mm -hmm. to Molech. And so that spirit, spirit, spirits don't die, <laughs> you know, they don't die. Yeah. We're, we live eternally, you know, we, we're as humans are created eternity and, and spirits don't die either. You know, they, uh, hopefully we can send them to hell, but you know, they, they don't die. God will send them to hell, but um, they don't die. So those spirits live on and, and, and they're demons. They, they torment people. I mean, we, we can see that in our society, people are tormented. And um, so, you know, we prayed against all that. And, you know, 95 is a huge trafficking corridor for drugs and for um, uh, for um, traffic, human trafficking. It's huge. It goes, what, New York to Florida. It's, it's big, you know, even beyond. So um, we, we covered that pretty well. And, and there's a movement all across the United States, and you may have heard of it, uh, for protecting your state's borders. Hmm. And that's what we've been, we wanted to participate in, the group that I'm, prayer group I'm in. So we wanted to participate in that, protecting the borders. And fasting in Fayetteville is something that, um, when I saw it, it really, really gripped my heart because I felt like, you know, we need unity in our communities. We need unity. And um, when I saw who was leading it and, I, and I, I saw some of the material, I thought, you know, this is, this is a huge, huge um, movement that is, we need to, that I wanna participate in is this idea of seeking God on behalf of our city and our county and our state. And so I, I really, my hat's off to you to the wonderful, wonderful, platform that you have um, put together and you have presented and the speakers that you've brought in. And I just hope that this will continue going forward. Thank you so much, Barbara. So what is God leading you to? The Praying for the Borders. Now, is that a website? Well, um, I listen to Give Him 15 and, and several of the people that I made listen to Give Him 15 and, and that's connected to a, a, a huge prayer network and and it, it it is it is a lot of prophetic stuff on there and some people kind of shy away from that, you know, but I the, the longer I'm a Christian, the more uh, I understand about this idea of God speaking. And um, so um, I, I found that that has been really beneficial for me. And that's connected me to a lot of different um, prayer groups. For and, praying and for the borders, you'll continue that, it sounds like. Yes. Uh, well, we, we did, there, there's supposed to be, um, there was a, there was an understanding or there was a, um, I, I, I'm careful to use certain words. That, you know, we have a lot of people that don't aren't really all the same, right? So, yeah. um, but there, there is a um, many people believe that that this needed to be done by September. Okay, so we there have been people working not just this month, but over the last couple of years, really have been working on this and has been building and building and building. And that's what I hope is going to happen in Fayetteville, fasting in Fayetteville, is that this is this is going to build. And people, because I had a, when I was, pre, when I was in choir at Manor Church, long, like what, 13, 12, 13, 12 years ago, around there, um, 
at that point, I, we were um, just praying and before our, in a rehearsal and stuff like that. And, and you know, it was, we had pause time for God to speak and so forth. And as I was, I was, I just had this, this impression I don't, you know, it's not like a voice or anything, but just an impression that Fayetteville is going to be known as a city of faith. And that's been on my heart ever since then. And so when this fasting in Fayetteville came, it's like, all right, we're going, we're going. So, okay. yeah. so I, I believe, I believe that Fayetteville is going to become known in the United, in, in our, in our state as a city of faith. Mm -hmm. and, that will um, definitely be a move of God. Yeah. It, I am looking for things that only God can do. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for things that only God can do. Yes. I, I, say, I pray it every day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barbara. Okay, Sue, you just came in. Anything that you want to share about this experience, what you've learned, what God's calling you to, any of the resources that have been beneficial? And if so, will you go up to that laptop so that the uh, Zoom community can hear you? Thank you so much. I wish I had the benefit of hearing what everyone said. You will. Uh, but, <laughs> I will listen back at it. I have loved it. I have First of all, I'm very sad that I wasn't able to attend every single one because every single one that I did attend, I gleaned valuable information. Mm -hmm. um, I love the mixture of um, the health benefits of fasting and the spiritual benefits of fasting. Mm -hmm. And God has already shared with me that he will, I am better able to hear God mm -hmm. when I focus mm -hmm. and when I do some intentional listening mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. my prayer that was one valuable thing mm -hmm. the help end of it i especially learned validating what i already thought about the need for resistance weight training mm -hmm. to keep muscles healthy during this process if you're going to do any significant fasting the microgreens have changed my life <laughs> um, you know as far as the physical part <laughs> goes the healthy part goes um I, I think the biggest thing was the intentional study in mm -hmm. God's word and how valuable intentional listening can mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prayer is two way. It's talking to God and listening. Yeah, thank you so much for that perspective. Sue. Yeah. Okay, Katrina, Teresa, someone else from our Zoom community, please share about our 12 weeks together. Okay, they're not saying anything. Would you anything you want to say, Susan? And if so, if you'll just go up to the mic so they can hear. Okay, Katrina, I'm muted, but you're take. Um, yeah. Prior to this class beginning, um, my husband had been through serious health issues, and uh, um, it had was affecting me in the stress level and everything, and. Um, I had lost focus on God and was having uh, heart, uh, jaw ache, chest discomfort, and everything. And um, I'm prior to the, uh, Denise announcing this fasting and faithful program, I had made the comment to my daughter that um, I needed to pray more. And uh, we were having the revival, and then I Denise put out. Uh, um, bulletin on the prayer um, fasting in Fayetteville I was fasting what is this and I've been a Christian for a long time so um, it was really a uh, humbling experience to learn you know that Jesus has told us when you pray and when you fast and when you give so the expectation was to fast and um, so this 12 weeks has really opened um, my uh, biblical understanding of fasting and um, the resources have been outstanding and I'm still replaying them all to there's so much to grasp grasp from it and so um, um, I feel led to, to fast I don't have all the details yet but when I told my daughter I needed to pray more um, and I needed 
the point being to focus more on God. Well, fasting is that's mm -hmm. its purpose to get clarity. Mm -hmm. This 12 week course has definitely been a godsend for me and a message and an encouragement. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your sharing and your support. Yeah. Because that's exactly what we talked about week two was chronic pain in the body. And then when we had, was that week 10 when we had the massage therapist here, that stress shows up in our body and stays there in chronic pain, tension, stress. Yeah, so that was helpful to put all that together. And before you came in, Stephen was saying that he went on, he's a physician's assistant. So he's going to continue his fasting journey, and he got his, his insurance panel approved so that he can work with us as a group or individually to continue that journey in a healthy way. Now, Stephen, that's is that license for him? Will you be able to work with anybody on Zoom? Yeah, as far as I know, so it's just that I have uh, you know, general malpractice type stuff. Um, but yeah, working with even a Zoom person, I would really like to uh, go and even check up on at the place and find some land for the work. Move yourself from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Stephen was saying for you all that um, he's going to be available to provide medical supervision for anybody who's fasting and may have some health concerns and may be able to do that by Zoom, depending on where you're located. So thank you, Stephen. So that's good for you to know since you just came. Okay, Katrina or Teresa, any, Jeannie, Sonia, anybody May else? I? May I speak? Yes, Jeannie. I appreciate this um, course for many different reasons. I love this uh, the syllabus, how I could work and look and plan ahead and participate uh, academically. I mean, with my brain as well as just be present mm -hmm. with my body. <laughs> I love the... Um, study tools the resources how we can go back and if we miss i miss i could go back and i can catch up and i can learn i love about it how we had um local pastor your pastor and we had dr young and that we had community voices and that we can literally listen and then go in and uh, participate in our own community. I love that um, that this was a 12 week course and over this 12 week time, it was a, it is set apart for us, but I was also seeing other people asking the, the people of faith to consider fasting and it's still, I'm seeing it all around me where I think that we as a community and as a nation and as the whole world can honestly say, this is beyond us, our the conditions mm -hmm. that are around us and, and we cannot do this on our own and that we have to have help and it has to be um, precision. It has to be as the Lord desires and I know I want relief. I want it all just to stop and it's all just to be kind. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and we just have to get beyond ourselves here. And I, I have fasted um, comfortably. <laughs> That's my favorite way to fast. Um, <laughs> but I think that I have come to understand that there is a maturity, regardless of our age. And where we are in our spiritual walk, where he's saying, no, this is going to require more. And um, he gave it all. So I have to pursue the more. Just a moment. I'm on the, in a class. Just a moment. No. Hmm. So that, that's it. Thank you. I really have enjoyed this. And I can't, I love the resources. I can't wait to just keep going. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Jeannie, for sharing. Yeah, that is something to mature because as I kind of said, Sandra and I were saying, because we've been talking, this was a conversation that we have at 5.30 in the morning on Mondays and Wednesdays. And so all these resources that we gathered as we just talk and read, we're like, okay, well, we're kind of just wrapping this up, but let's see if anybody else wants to join the conversation. And after 12 weeks, Sandra and I are saying, uh, we're not wrapping up. <laughs> it's more to read and mature, as you said, Jeannie, and continue to learn and listen how God is leading and, and directing because you know, anytime we're spending time with God is not something that's just happened in the past. It's for our future and what's going to happen next. So the ever presence of God with us compels us to move forward with what we're learning and not just say, wasn't that a great lesson we did last week? <laughs> You see, it's, it's like, what's next? Yeah. And so the uncertainty, as Jeannie was saying, of the world, we need God. Yeah. We need to hear intently how he's protecting us. Not that, as Reese House said, not that I'm scared because everybody's scared, but because God's preparing us, equipping us for what's ahead. You know, not in a scary kind of way, but in a confident way that as as um, Barbara was saying, whatever's happening in the world is bigger than us and we need God. So we're leaning in. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else in the room want to say anything? I think I would. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Jeannie, Dr. Young is in Oklahoma or Israel, or Jordan. He's not local. <laughs> I'm going to probably be more transparent than normally happens these days. I love this country. And America has been very kind to me. But over the past few years, given all that seems to be going on and what the future looks like, it has really taken a toll. And then other issues that I deal with brought me to the point of, and don't be concerned, I'm not suicidal, I mean me, but it brought me to the point of looking forward to death. And I would sleep in in the morning because I'm retired. Take it easy. There was really nothing in life that I looked forward to. And then this experience comes along. And I think the proof of its impact on me is that the beast can witness. I didn't have any projects going on around the house. Took care of what had to be done. But over the last two weeks or so, I've been getting up 5.30 in the morning, excited about the day looking forward to it. working on a project around the deck in the backyard. I was out there until one o'clock this morning, enjoyed every minute of it. And then to Denise's surprise, I was up probably 6.30, mm -hmm. doing clothes, off to another exciting day. So I could get into various speakers and all of that spoke to me. And, and then I've done some fasting one day a week. Been more deliberate in my prayer time and study. And all I can say is it works. It's 
So I am thankful for this experience. And my expectation is that I'll keep up this pace now. Now that I understand, I'll be back. So I thank everybody who has had input and part of this. And especially, I thank God for what has been one of the greatest experiences in my life. 76 years. Thank you. Okay. And I love that. <laughs> yes. I love that too. Okay. If there are no other comments from our participants. Uh, Denise? Yes. You asked what our next step was. I just wanted to let you know that um, because I learned a couple things, I learned a lot from here, but two of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to get a therapeutic massage and start my exercise program. Then maybe I'll feel like I'll be up to getting up at 5.30 in the morning and doing the things I want to get started doing. <laughs> Right now, I can't seem to get on a schedule where I go to bed so I can get up. But hey, if I put everything in order, it will come, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. Yeah. Great. Okay, Katrina? I just want to say thank you for a great experience. I've fasted over a number of years, but Jeannie's comments, Barbara's comments, Carl Merritt's comments, all pretty much culminate exactly the way I felt. I thought that I was going to have a summer of quote unquote relaxation. I was going to be on sabbatical. And then I received a call. And the call was, hey, Katrina, would you like to be a part of this? And as Dr. Merritt and I talked more and more, I thought, this is wonderful, fabulous, the community voices, Dr. Young's comments, Dr. Merritt, Dr. Blair's presentations, the books, Watchman Knees, Let Us Pray, all of that, all of these resources that we now have um, kind of in our back pocket to refer to, to pray about, have really enlightened what I know already about fasting. I think like Jeannie also mentioned, um, and, and Carl Merritt, I've fasted in the past, but there's a maturing process, full day fasts, mm. <laughs> fasting just liquids only. It's amazing what a difference also that is made. Um, in, in my life. So it encourages me to continue to do so, to continue to fast for our nation. And as I mentioned to Denise about um, the video that was put together, to, to really pray for our local government leaders and individuals also within our schools who are with our children every mm -hmm. single day. So thank you for the opportunity and the experience. And it was a pleasure to be a part of. Thank you so much, Katrina. I told her she could put on her resume sound technician because I would always say, Katrina, can you hear? <laughs> can you hear? <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Okay, Teresa, anything? If not, Sandra, I'll ask for your closing comments and prayer and then Dr. Yeah, Teresa. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. And I have thoroughly enjoyed the teachings here. When I think back on everything, it's like in Psalms 50 when God says, I'm calling my people together because he has something that he wants to say. And so it's like he's calling people together because he wants to rekindle fasting in our lives because it's very, very important. Fasting is not new to me. Um, out of my prayer life, I think I've been saved now ever since 1980. 
And so in my young babe life, maybe I was about, I would say about eight years saved or younger, spending a lot of time with God in prayer and yielding myself to the Holy Spirit. He developed fasting in me. I have been on a 40-day fast led by the Holy Spirit where I just ate like salads. I have been on three 21-day fasts where it was only liquids. I go on fasting for three days, eat four days, fast three days, eat four days. And it's all by the leading of the Holy Spirit because he wants to de develop something in me for his will to be done, not just in my life, but for around the world. Because Jesus Christ is Lord and he is coming back again. And the enemy is just kicking up doing all types of things around the world. But through our prayer and fasting as believers and as the church, God's will will be done. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to thank Denise and Sandra and Dr. Young and all the presenters for taking their time and sharing knowledge with us. So that is the church of Jesus Christ, who is still alive. We have to remember, it doesn't matter how bad it looks. Mm -hmm. We are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Satan is under our feet. And when we fast, it's like we're putting our flesh under where we can walk in the reality of who we are in Christ Jesus. And it is so important that we eat healthy and exercise because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit of God to shed for his life in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Sandra, your closing comments and prayer for us, please. Then Dr. Young. Hey, this has been quite a ride. <laughs> it has been a very exciting time for me, a very challenging time because it made me want to learn more and at a, a different level. I was, we were, reading, studying for self-improvement, for self-edification, -edific for, for personal reasons. But when it's opened up to share with others, then you have to take it to another level. I went back to reread every book and study every book because I wanted to make sure I was get, getting the gist of, not just the gist of it, but the depth of it to share with others. And it made me learn it better, want to learn it more. And I will keep going through those resources, always find something else I missed. I'm excited about the resources that are online. Now I get to look at the other stuff <laughs> besides what I was working with. And I'm looking forward to that. I wanted to call this resource to your attention. That's one of the, the books listed, listed called Eat This and Live because it's a small book with a wealth of information to share with family. It has bright colors, bright uh, pictures of the food. There was a magazine format, a little bit here on different places on the page. So it's easy reading and kids enjoy it because they're looking at these bright pictures and the different kinds of food. It, it encapsulates the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the kinds of foods, the things to avoid. And it, it even has a section on what to eat when you eat out to get the healthiest things from, from, oh my gosh, TGI Fridays, to, I mean, all of the, the Chipotle's, the different restaurants, what you can get on the menu that will be healthier than just not really, you know, any, mini money. Well, no, it gives you a basis for making healthy choices wherever you are, home, grocery store, when you leave the, the live food section to the dead food section, you need to know that. But uh, anyway, it's a wonderful little resource that the, the, your kids will love and it will be helpful for the whole family. The time spent in this has been extremely delightful for me because I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much from all the presenters, 
from the resources and I love learning. So this has been a challenge and a joy for me. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I learned to combine fasting, different types of fasting for different purposes. And I didn't realize I could do that. So at times, I, it was helpful for me to learn more about intermittent fasting because I have uh, an aunt who lives with me who will be 96 next month. And she is on 10 different kinds of medications, but she was able, is able to do intermittent fasting with me and still take her morning pills and her nighttime pills. And she is uh, doing better. She is getting uh, uh, stronger. She's learning uh, to let her body rest during those non-eating times so that even though she doesn't have a great deal of mobility, her body is able to, to uh, do more that it, that it needs to do because she's not eating all the time. So she wanted to engage with the intermittent fasting with me. So that was helpful. And we do that on a, 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 a 10, 14 window or a, preferably the 8, 16 window, which is most of the time. And I, when other things came up, I've learned to do a fast for whatever it is. Like I, I, Denise and I decided we would fast until from solid foods until four o'clock on two days a week. So that's just a built in fast. That's just on general principles. I'm doing that just so my body knows you're not eating till four o'clock. Deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. Just for that level of discipline. And when I needed clarity and felt stuck on something, I went into a, a, a three day water fast and I got the clarity that I needed. And when I came down with a sore throat during this period, I said, oh my gosh, that's not a regular sore throat because I normally don't get sick, but I knew I know what a strep throat feels like. It's, oh, oh no, we're not having that. And so I immediately got off everything but raw, fresh vegetable juices. And it was gone in four days. God raised me up because normally strep throat takes you out for two weeks. It was gone. And I learned to combine things. But the most exciting part for me is the discipline that comes with the fasting. When the body is checked, the spirit is on point. It wakes me up. It, it makes me want to spend more time with God. It enhances my time with God. It uh, cleanses my time with God. It's like, yeah, that I, I feel detoxed <laughs> during my, my, my prayer time. And that's a wonderful thing. It gives me more to give to God. It's not just what I'm putting down, it's what I'm picking up and handing to him. And I get more out of it because of that. I've enjoyed every resource, all of the people involved. I've especially enjoyed the team that has been working with, um, with Denise and their patience and their, <laughs> I had technology issues. <laughs> and every week. <laughs> so I am very grateful to Sonia and, and uh, um, Katrina and um, uh, the young man at MANA. Um, Andre. Andre. I want to say Aaron because I know so many Aaron's. Oh, Andre, for your patience, your kindness, for walking me through so many things so many times. Operator error was the problem. It was me. So yeah. I, I'm very grateful to them okay. that made this possible for me. Yeah. So I thank everyone who has participated because you enhance the experience for each of us. We were on one accord. We were learning, growing together. And that community, God honors. That agreement, he honors. And it doesn't mean we agreed on every little thing, but we were, you can be uh, in unity without being unanimous. So it was wonderful to have that all around the world, all around the country, people coming in. And I thank you for what you brought to the table because we all got to eat very well. Hmm. I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you so much, Sandra. Okay, Dr. Young, will you have closing comments and and in prayer for us. And I sent everybody the email, the letter from Pastor Rob and his 
that's posted on the home page of the Fasting in Fayetteville website. And he gave us some comments last week, and that's recorded on week 11. So he's out with family this week. You're muted, Dr. Young. Hmm. Still not hearing you. Was glad it's you and not me this time. <laughs> there. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, well, the Lord is so good. This has been such a tremendous blessing to me. And uh, I've looked forward to this. Uh, it, it was a little challenging because I was traveling a lot. I was in Israel for part of the time. I was in Poland part of the time in Dallas. And, and uh, of course, here today, back home, I always love to be here in my own uh, office to be able to to uh, share and to talk. I think one of the greatest things was just to uh, reconnect with Dr. Merritt, Dr. Blair, that I uh, knew so well at ORU and we've maintained some contact over the years. Uh, but uh, to see uh, Denise and to uh, just follow uh, her life experience, all the things that she's learned, all, all of her experience in her career, and then to be make making practical application. I really liked one of the first emails I got from, from uh, Dr. Denise, which was the need to pray for our nation and the fact that we are heading in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, I, I really uh, loved all of the, the in-depth study going deeper into these books. Many of these books, uh, Watchman Nee, uh, Reese Howells, th these are books that uh, we've read, discussed, uh, my incredibly awesome wife, Gail, I wish she could have been able to participate in all this, but, she, but these books have meant a lot in her life, in our lives, as we prayed and fasted together uh, for our ministry. And now, you know, to kind of refocus, but uh, Sandra just was able to convey the message and and make it come alive to us. Uh, I, I really did appreciate what Pastor Rob James wrote. Uh, I think two things that he emphasized was that fasting is a preparation for God's will, and it's a motivation to action. And uh, he commented, I, I think, had a lot to say about Esther praying to save the nation. And, you know, one of the greatest examples of fasting is uh, Jonah, where the king uh, led the entire nation to fasting. I, I just like uh, our our friend, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember everybody's name, but he said, I love this nation. And, and I think all of us have been participants. We love our nation. Thank you. And, and how this has given new motivation. I really appreciate what Barbara said about praying for different uh, areas. And of yeah. course, uh, what uh, um, Katrina said, we had so many, Barbara, I, I think we've had so many good insights from those that have participated. It's been such a blessing to hear how fasting and prayer, uh, Teresa uh, talking about the goodness of God and, and praying together for our families, praying together for our nation with praise, celebrating the goodness of the Lord. So uh, to me, as just being a presenter, I've prepared, prayed, uh, thought a lot about fasting and uh, the way we need to have fasting as a part of our uh, daily discipline, our, our, our weekly discipline, how that we're walking with the Lord. Uh, one aspect of fasting, I think, that we haven't talked as much about is the fact that uh, in the Bible, sometimes it's about grief. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the major fasts is for the destruction of the temple, the ninth of August. In fact, there's kind of a lead up to that. You know, there's a grief when the walls of Jerusalem were breached, the 17th of Tammuz is a fast, and that's mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 39. And then there's the fast for the assassination of Gedaliah, who was the final ruler of Judea. Uh, and we have the fast for the, the temple. 
And, and there are these deep things that have happened that people are grieving and they're fasting about. And so uh, I think it's very powerful. One verse of scripture I wanted to read in conclusion today. Uh, I have two scriptures I really wanted to read in our concluding remarks. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. In any case, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep. You must not grieve like the others who have no hope. Since we believe that Yeshua died and rose again from the dead, so also God will bring him, bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Yeshua Jesus. We tell you this by the teaching of the Lord that we who are still alive and remaining with the coming of the Lord will surely not go ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. The dead in the anointed one will rise first. Then we who are living, still living and remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So that you must comfort one another by these teachings. We don't grieve as those without a hope or fasting sometimes is a sign of grieving. I think a lot of times in the Bible, it should be grieving for sin. And one of the things that I saw in this uh, example from Pastor James, we've got two examples where they fasted and prayed grieving for sin and it brought complete spiritual renewal. And that's what we're longing for for our nation. I, I remember we were we talked today. Barbara was bringing up the human trafficking. You know, so there's more slavery today than ever in, in the world in the history of the world because of the human trafficking. Part of it's about the open border issues that we have. We we have children. Two hundred fifty thousand children disappear in America. We don't know where they are. They're never found. These these are things that we should be praying about. Our borders, our, our security, our nation. Uh, I, I think what we've seen, something I've tried to emphasize is that we first have to pray for our own hearts to be right. We need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our churches, our communities, our schools. Pray for our nations. We need a great renewal. America could be the, the world entity that would lead a worldwide revival. And I think that's something that we really long for because there's not really a political solution. As several people have said today and shared, we're looking at problems today that are impossible without God. There, we, we don't have an easy solution. It's not a political party or a political candidate. It's really knowing the Lord. We've got to know and seek the Lord. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves to pray. And so as I was thinking about the grieving and the... Uh, the times that we grieve, especially for the destruction of Jerusalem, sometimes we grieve for a loved one. We might remember them, go, we, we miss them. Uh, even if we know they're with the Lord and we know they're happy, it's still a personal loss. Uh, I like the way that in the Jewish tradition, you're instructed not to try to say anything to someone that's grieving, but you, you comfort them by being with them and listening. And it's very important for us to be good listeners in the way that we provide comfort and encouragement to people so that uh, we would encourage them in the right way. But think about Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah was a prophet who was prophesying about the destruction, the coming of the destruction of Jerusalem and calling for spiritual renewal. And his scribe, because it was dangerous for him to go in the temple, took this precious scroll, the word of God, that he had written down these prophecies, read them orally. It touched the people. They, they were being moved spiritually. So they brought it to the king. And the king was sitting in the winter palace. He had a, a fire that he was warming himself. And as they read the precious words of this prophecy, he cut it with his knife and he burned the words. Jeremiah 36, I think, really is a point that calls us to action because there, instead of repenting like uh, the king of Nineveh or the way that what had happened in the experience of Esther where a na two nations were saved, the king did not repent. And the Bible says no one tore their, their garments, no one 
fasted, no one repented, no one asked for forgiveness. And as a result, Jerusalem was burned. Uh, it is interesting that when we look at archaeology, that in Jeremiah 38, we have two individuals that were kind of bothering, uh, persecuting Jeremiah. One is Gedaliah, the son of Pashur, who's different from the king. And we also have Yuchal. Interesting, in archaeology, they discovered in one of the houses in Jerusalem, clay bula. These are little clay seals that were put on a scroll, and they put the name of the person on the bula, and it was clay to preserve that scroll. You know, they, they would tie it with a thong of leather, and then they would put the this scroll, out, and then they mark it like with the ring or with maybe a, a necklace that would have their name on it. And they actually found the names of these two individuals in the same verse in Jeremiah 38. And when Jerusalem was burned and destroyed, it fired that clay and those names are preserved. You can see that in the City of David website where they've done the excavations in Jerusalem. And today, I, I just feel the sense that we must continue to fast and pray for our families, for ourselves. But we've got to see the needs of our nation today. It seems like we are heading in the wrong direction. Our nation is in peril. We, we, we are living in a very dangerous time. And we need to realize the dimensions of this problem. It's us, the people of God. When we pray, when we seek the Lord, when we fill our, our lives with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God, studying the Word of God, it's going to bring the spiritual renewal that we need. I'm reminded when I talk about this of some remarkable words of Rabbi Jerkim. Either we make it an altar for God or it is invaded by demons. Amen. There can be no neutrality. Either we are ministers of the sacred or slaves of evil. Hmm. And I think that's kind of the, where we are right now in our spiritual walk in our nation. We are trying to be have complete neutrality, uh, accept everything. Uh, there, there's no right or wrong. We're calling right wrong uh, and wrong right. And we're just supposed to be neutral. But really, when we look at the scriptures, we're called to a spiritual battlefront. And I think this is the opportunity for us to pray together, to fast together, to seek uh, our personal renewal, you know, we we really have to take care of ourselves first and foremost. And as I've said in some of these videos, I think sometimes we're always looking at my wife or my kids or what's wrong with them. But really, the first thing we have to do is take care of our own personal inventory. And when we change, that'll affect your spouse, your husband, your wife. That'll affect your family. And it affects our whole community. And we've emphasized, uh, I think, several times, this, especially from the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, healing, reconciliation, forgiveness, as we forgive one another and we enter into that life of forgiveness. God forgives us and draws us closer to himself and brings spiritual renewal. So fasting helps us. Uh, fasting in Fayetteville, this is creating our whole movement now. I, I think it starts with us. Uh, all of us that have been able to participate in this wonderful 12-week program. I know it's been challenging for some. We haven't been able to be there all the time. I know I've, I've had to uh, tape some of them because of uh, technical problems or just uh, the travel that I had. But uh, it's been such a joy to connect with Denise and Sandra and, and uh, Pastor James, everyone that has made this so wonderful and then to come together here at this concluding time where we've been able to share with one another how it's impacted us and it's changing our lives. I think we'll always be different if we and, and better and renewed and focused on the spiritual battle that we, we don't want to be invaded by demons. We want to be ministers of the sacred, allow the word of God to live in our lives. And so uh, the second scripture uh, that I just wanted to read in concluding today is a uh, uh, verse in Jude, chapter 20. However, much beloved friends, you must keep building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit constantly, keeping yourselves firmly in the love of God, 
waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord, Yeshua, Jesus. And I think those are really maybe the four things that I want, I want to take away from this. And, and I'll encourage you to go back and kind of meditate maybe on Jude chapter 20. We want to build ourselves up in the most holy faith. That's the most important thing. Praying in the Holy Spirit constantly. Uh, praying in the Spirit. Praying with the prayer language. Praying with all of your heart in the Holy Spirit. Keeping ourselves in the love of God. Even when we talk about sin, we, we always love the sinner. We are all sinners. We're all saved by grace. None of us are any better than, than anyone else. We, we love every person. We want to keep ourselves in the love of Christ, Christ, love of Jesus. And we are waiting expectantly for the return of the Lord. We do not grieve as those who have no hope. We have a great hope in the coming of the Lord. He's blessing us. He's changing us. And it's amazing how we, as we draw nearer to God, he draws nearer to us. Uh, I remember they asked, uh, one of these places I mentioned visited in Poland was the uh, Kotska Rebbe, but, the, but he would say, where is God? Wherever you let him in. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit, that's why we need to be so careful about our, our health. And we talk about the temple being destroyed. The temple was a center of worship. It was a place of everybody gathering together. And now that the temple is gone, there's, there's a great emphasis that we are the temple of God. And the book of Revelation sees the people of God being the temple of God to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, uh, live within us, renew us, uh, bring renewal to our families, especially through forgiveness, reconciliation, uh, healing of the body. Uh, we can ask the Lord he said, when it's impossible with man it is always possible with God Jesus said all things are possible to the one who believes uh, I, John believe is seen when we believe and we have faith in the Lord we will see the great things fasting praying leads us into that uh, I guess I would conclude with the prayer and any other things that uh, uh, Dr. Merritt, Dr. Blair have to say, but uh, I would just like to conclude with that blessing, the ironic blessing. I think it's so beautiful in Hebrew. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. He'll preserve you and guard you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, his presence to radiate into your life. And may he be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you shalom, true peace. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you this day for this wonderful opportunity we've had over the 12 weeks to participate in fasting in Fayetteville, this great vision that you put on the heart of Dr. Merritt and Dr. Blair have come together to encourage us to take care of our bodies, to, to disconnect from all the distractions in our world and to deeply connect with you, Lord. We're connecting with you today. We pray for spiritual renewal. And when we look at our nation with the great peril and the danger that we see where we're going in the wrong direction in so many ways, we just pray, Lord, that you would bring spiritual renewal, that you would bring healing, that you will bring forgiveness and reconciliation. I pray for my own heart, Lord, that it would be right with you. And I know I join with all that's been participating and praying that we would be renewed, that we could use fasting, prayer, disciplines of study, giving to those that are in need. When you fast, when you pray, when you give, Lord, bring, bring that renewal in our own lives as we reach out to others when we reach out to you. Continue to bless, restore, heal, and build us up in our most holy faith. Keep us praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep us in the love of God as we wait expectantly for the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. After saying amen, I often like to wait and listen because prayer is two way. <laughs> so my pause of silence was to listen. Well, thank the Lord. Many seeds have been planted and they will bring forth much fruit. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank yes. you so much, Sandra. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. God bless. Right. Thank you very All much. Right. God bless you. Okay, I'm going to miss this time. <laughs> God said, don't y'all log on at 12 o'clock next Thursday. I'm going to do it. <laughs> all right. oh, thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. All right. I all thought right. we had one more week. Oh, no. You, that's why we got YouTube. You can replay <laughs> all day. <laughs> well, we go to, I'm going to be on next week for sure. <laughs> Oh, you, you have you have the camera to yourself next week. I, I would recommend that new movie, Sounds of Freedom, that deals with some of these issues. Very important movie. If anyone hasn't seen it, I think they would really enjoy it and, yeah, and learn from it. it, it it's yeah. a tough movie because it deals with the human trafficking issue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's on my list because I I learned from. You know, Fayetteville being on that I-95 corridor is a high sex trafficking area oh, right yeah. where we are. And that's so disheartening to hear. And one of the detectives that did a training for us said that usually wherever the Super Bowl is, is a high sex traffic route at that time, too. I was shocked. So yeah, the it's not just the drugs, but yeah, that sex trafficking in, in our area is big. And, Thank and you, I Dr. Second Young, that for recommending that movie. Yeah, I I second that movie. Uh, I've seen it twice. Um, it's even though it's a hard subject, it's very well done, very well done. So. Um, you, you don't come away with the worst feeling. You come away with hope, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, you come yeah, away with yeah. hope. And, mm -hmm. and that, you know, that you want to try to help do something in some way, but you with hope that, that it is, is, is winnable. Mm -hmm. It's winnable. It, it's got it's a true time story time and it, it does give hope. Thanks yeah. for the, I agree, Barbara. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's something. As a matter of fact, yeah, when I go to Tennessee for my professional development training, one of our one of several of our seminars will be on working with sex traffic, usually girls, and and the trauma that they experience and how to hear hear them and help them toward their journey of wholeness. So, at first, I'm like, oh, I don't want to take that class, but it's like. I need to take that class because there are so, so many that come right down Interstate 95 where we are. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I just, it's really on my heart. And I think that we really need to press in and pray for those victims because that's our next generation. Hmm. And they can go one of two ways. They can get strong and do better, you know, do a better future for the next generation after them, or they can get crumbled. And so we just need to press in and pray that the Lord would restore them. Amen. Yeah, yeah and I think that's a part of, of what God is building in us here through this 12-week experience. So we would be fit vessels for God's use 
when we come across those people so we know what to do and and like Barbara said, they may go one or two ways, but it's like we have the power through the Holy Spirit to snatch those young people out of the jaws of death or hell or evil influence. And because of what has happened to them does not have to write their future. So right. we can teach them about God's forgiveness and God's love for them and God accepts them. You see, and what happened to them doesn't mean that they are tainted. They are love. They're new creatures in Christ. And that's the message God's given to us to share with them. The Holy Spirit in us has comforted us so that we can comfort others. So we're equipped. And one of the things that um, Tim, uh, the, 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 origin, the person that the movie was made after was made because of the, the actual person that um, saved the the kids, the, the traffic children. Um, one of the things that he said is that when they go out on a mission, they always have in place counselors and a place for these victims to go to a safe place to get help. So mm -hmm. I thought that was really encouraging that, mm -hmm. you know, they don't just send them home or send them, they, they go through a process. There's always someone right there to, to counsel them and to move them into a safe place and a place where they can get help and healing. You know, see, so that's kind of part of, like I said, when we pray to God and then we listen, because this conversation starting now, I remember some weeks ago asking the part about, okay, I'm getting the, the, the prayer part when you fast, when you pray, but then when you give alms, I'm like, okay, yeah, we tied to the church, but how do we invest our resources somewhere where it's going to do good for the kingdom of God. So uh, Sue here was saying sex, there's some sex trafficking right here in our county. What oh, yeah. branch of the body of Christ has stepped up to have a shelter or a home or a family who will take these people in even temporarily? If not, maybe we can pull our resources together and have somewhere safe for them or support a safe place that's taken care of these folks who've been sex trafficked. So see how it pays to listen after you say amen? This is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We did have that one. We did have that one. We did have that one. You want to go up there so they can hear you? Oh, there is, there's a plan. I wonder if it's a 12-week plan. I was just saying that right here in our county, um, we do have a home um, for rescued. This particular home is for girls who've been rescued from human trafficking. And we have a team of men um, who will physically go to places and physically remove girls from bad situations and bring them to this home. Um, I'm not at liberty to share much no, more information about that know. because of safety reasons, but mm -hmm. um, I volunteer with the, um, our, our, our court district's guardian ad litem program, and I've had two incidences, one where a um, seven-year-old was affected by human trafficking because her mother was being trafficked, mm -hmm. and this child was taken um, out of the county and found in Dallas, Texas, oh, yeah. after her mother was arrested um, for prostitution in Louisiana. She had been left, this child had been left as collateral with the mm -hmm. uh, human traffickers of her mother. So this child's life has definitely been influenced by human mm -hmm. trafficking, although she is now safe. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had another child who was in foster care off and on for all of her life. And then she aged out of the system without all the safeguards mm -hmm. in place. And she has now been trafficked um, wow. and, and is lost to me. I hope someone can find her, but it is right here in our county. But the good news is there are people working for the children of our county who fall into that world. My gosh, thank you for sharing that. So see what you started, Dr. Young? I'm glad you said that out loud. But see, now I would, now she said she has men 
See, that gets me back to my old days. Like I got combat skills. I'll go up in somewhere and, and rescue one of these young ladies. So that motivates me to get in shape. It's like, okay, let me get my upper body strength going. And what was that class I attended? Um, the gun safety class is like, I'm getting my concealed weapons. Like I'm going and get somebody. <laughs> So that that's good. I thank you, thank you for saying that. See what came out of si intentional silence. So now I know where my money's going. You know, next time you see me, I'll be packing. I'll be buff. Yeah, and I do want to say we have some similar works here in Tulsa, different individuals. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy to say, but I I think really we need to do more. We need to, and I think mm -hmm. prayer is a good place to start, but. Giving money, supporting, being educated to know yes. what's going on. Educate ourselves to know more about what's going on. Because the, the news media, I mean, let, let's face it, it's very, very, um, how should I say, uh, almost propaganda. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. you know, you're telling a narrative and what doesn't fit their narrative, we don't hear about. We need to right. find the resources to learn more about this mm -hmm. and pray and do what we can. So. Uh, go go for it, Dr. Merritt. Go, Denise. I I'm going with really Sue. Good. Yes, I'm following <laughs> Sue. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Good. So now that's my mission. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now we're re we're really done with this part now. But that that's that intentional listening that you talked about that we just yeah. did. see. Thank you. Well, thank you all. I'm going to miss you. All right. All right. Bye -bye. We'll see y'all. God bless. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Blessings always. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who shared. And thank you, Carl. You you really messed me up with your testimony. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. Thank you. Love to all. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Bye-bye.